Voyager 1, a spacecraft launched in 1977, has long been our silent emissary at the edge of the known universe. Against all odds, it survived the dark, silent vacuum of space, crossed the boundary into interstellar territory, and kept sending back messages, whispers from the edge of everything we understand. But recently something changed. After months of eerie silence and a complete failure of its data transmission system, the spacecraft came back online. And the signal it sent wasn't typical. It didn't resemble data. It sounded more like a warning. A steady, low-frequency hum, a kind of gravitational pull from something unseen. And within NASA, an unsettling silence replaced routine updates, a silence that, in its own way, spoke louder than anything they could have said. This wasn't a routine glitch or some unknown cosmic oddity. It pointed to something far more unsettling. What we once believed to be the empty edge of our solar system now appears not to be empty at all, and maybe it never was. For decades, Voyager 1 has quietly carried the legacy of human curiosity. A lone traveller, venturing deeper into the cosmos than anything we've ever built. It defied the limits of technology and endurance, continuing its mission long past what anyone thought possible. But in late 2024, its signals became garbled, unreadable. The clean, steady stream of scientific data had turned into chaos. Voyager's flight data system, its brain, was malfunctioning. It was still transmitting, but what it sent made no sense. For five painstaking months, NASA worked in near-complete silence, unsure if Voyager could even understand the commands being sent. And every attempt had to wait through a grueling 45-hour round trip, 22.5 hours to reach the spacecraft, and another 22.5 for a response. Each command was a whisper into the void, and each moment of silence stretched into something heavier. Then, on March 20th, 2025, something incredible happened. Voyager replied, not just with a carrier signal, but with data. At first, engineers rejoiced, but when they began decoding the fragments, their excitement faded. Something wasn't right. The instruments showed that Voyager was intact and functioning. Yet the environment it described was alien, nothing like what we expected. For years, the outer boundary of our solar system, the heliopause, was thought to be a gradual fading of solar influence, a smooth gradient into the emptiness beyond. But Voyager 1's new data shattered that assumption. What it found was not a gentle transition, but a violent, chaotic barrier, a wall of plasma, pressure spikes, and bursts of radiation far more intense than any model had predicted. It was a disturbance zone, where familiar laws of space seemed to bend, fracture, and then snap back into place with force. But what truly sent chills through the team were the density readings, massive fluctuations in the particles around Voyager. The data suggested something was compressing the space itself. A strange oscillation was recorded, like a heartbeat pulsing through the edge of the solar system. It wasn't electronic noise or malfunction. The signal was consistent, captured across multiple instruments, and it grew more pronounced the deeper Voyager moved. This rhythmic physical pulse in the dark pointed to something disturbing. That the solar system's edge was not just a line on a map, but something reactive, possibly even aware. Among the recovered data buried in the noise was a signal, narrow in range, low in frequency, and disturbingly regular. Clocking in at 3 kHz, it sat just below the known range for natural plasma wave oscillations. This wasn't a message in any traditional sense, there was no clear modulation, but it was unmistakably artificial in character. Voyager had actually heard it before, faintly, years ago. Back then it was dismissed as ambient background noise, but with improved processing and the probe closer than ever, the signal became undeniable. It had always been there, just too faint to recognize, until now. What made the signal even more puzzling was its persistence. It didn't fluctuate with solar storms, it didn't waver with the galactic background. It was constant, unmoved, like the ticking of a hidden clock, buried in the dark. Some scientists tried to explain it as a natural plasma resonance, but as Voyager continued, the signal didn't grow louder, it grew clearer, sharper. It began to show definition, structure. It wasn't random, it seemed intentional. 
and that's when the gravity of the situation began to take hold. As this signal was decoded, another anomaly came into focus. Voyager 1 was drifting, not because of any propulsion event or system error, it was being pulled. Its trajectory showed a slow, deliberate deviation, a movement caused by something external, something unaccounted for. Yet when NASA compared the data to all known celestial maps, they found no source of this pull, no stars, no planets, no black holes, just empty space, and something in that space was exerting force. NASA began redirecting instruments, deep space arrays and observatories toward the region Voyager was approaching. But nothing was found. No light, no heat, no known mass. Only a persistent darkness and a gravitational tug that wouldn't stop. Theories began to emerge. A rogue planet? A black hole? A dense pocket of dark matter? None of those explanations fit. They could not account for everything. The signal, the plasma barrier, the rhythmic density pulses, the changing trajectory. Voyager 1 wasn't falling. It was being drawn. Not towards something we could chart or observe, but towards something unknown. And now the silence from NASA began to take on a different meaning. Updates once made public started to slow down. Reports were redacted. Engineering teams that had been open about their work stopped sharing. Internal sources whispered about private briefings and outside agencies getting involved. Groups that typically step in when discoveries move beyond science into matters of national concern. The quiet inside NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory grew heavier. Engineers who once discussed minor system tweaks and trajectory corrections stopped talking. Even those known for speaking to the press withdrew. Voyager 1 had crossed a line, not just in space, but in consequence. Whatever it sent back wasn't just data anymore. It had become something else, something not meant to be widely known. Independent researchers took notice. The gravitational anomaly? Some said it was a dense cluster of dark matter. Others suggested the signal might be the last echo of some ancient cosmic event, still reverberating through time. But then the more radical theories began to surface. What if the signal wasn't natural? What if it was a response? What if Voyager, in crossing the heliopause, had triggered something, a kind of switch like activating a mechanism far older than human civilization? Some pointed back to earlier anomalies in space exploration, strange decelerations noticed by Pioneer 10 and 11 decades ago, long dismissed as thermal effects. What if those early probes had only brushed the edge of a frontier Voyager is now fully entering? And then came the most unsettling theory, that Voyager wasn't heading toward an object, but toward an answer. That the signal wasn't just a coincidence, it was a reply. That this part of space reacts to us, that it was waiting for us. That we weren't just looking into the void, something in the void was looking back. Even for those who reject fringe theories, the emotional weight of the data is real. We've always thought of space as a blank expanse, a place we can project, our curiosity. We mark progress by distances, from Earth to the Moon to Mars and beyond. But what if space isn't passive? What if it has structure, parameters, responses, perhaps even guardians? Voyager 1, once a symbol of fearless exploration, may now represent something deeper. It returned not just with scientific discovery, but with implication. If it's truly being influenced, if its course is not dictated by physics alone, then... We must confront a difficult question. What exactly have we stumbled into? Voyager was never meant to return in this way. It was supposed to be a farewell, a message in a bottle cast into the endless sea, but somehow it spoke again. And what it said wasn't comforting. It wasn't closure. It was a question. What? If the edge of our solar system isn't a boundary but a threshold, what if the silence we've heard all these years wasn't emptiness but restraint? What if Voyager wasn't just observing the unknown, but was seen by it, the hum, the gravitational pull, the shifting plasma? They might be mere data, but they might also be warnings, hints that the universe isn't as quiet and indifferent as we once believed, that beyond the edge of the sun's reach there are forces that watch, that wait, and maybe, just maybe, respond. And now we face the question no one wants to ask out loud. 
was sending Voyager out there. A mistake.